yeah. Um, hooks to nylon, always handy, obviously. Um, you can buy them already made up. Uh, or you can make your own up. Um, I tend to make my own up mainly. Um, and when I've got, i got what we call, um, well, it's, uh, I don't know what you call these, what do you call these? <laughs> uh, hook, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, might, might give me a clue if I read it. Oh, it's, just, it's a double, uh, oh, I don't know. Anyway, basically, um, uh, when I tie my hook lens up, I just put them on the, uh, uh, on the little rig, bend them round and secure them with a, a little pin uh, from a staple gun or a bit of, uh, you know, uh, tape, you know, insulation tape. So, yeah, they're both handy. You know, I mean, there's, there's loads of these on the market. Gudu do a, a range of them. Uh, this one's by Corum. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Some people have to remind, <laughs> remind me what they call, I don't know. Um, hookboard? Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is another little handy tool. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. This is basically got a little magnet on the end for picking up the hooks, loose hooks. Um, and the hooks, as I say, generally, you know, a little hook packet. Um, well, not hook packet, but a little hook box. And, and basically, you, open, you keep it. This is magnetic as well, by the way. So that's another little handy tool. And this is magnetic. And this will pick the hook up, as I say, from, from the... Uh, from the box, so as I say, very handy. Um, you can, you know, obviously wet your your um, finger and pick it up, but sometimes the magnet holds it too strong for you. But there, yeah, that's good. See, your, your hooks don't fall out. Um, another little tip. Um, also, if you get um, if you get a uh, pinch of some of your missus' uh, grains of sand, um, grains, sorry, <laughs> grains of rice. They just say our oh, sand. Uh, yeah, rice. Sprinkle a little bit of rice in your um, in your with your hooks, and that will help to absorb the water. Okay, because uh, as you say, hooks can sometimes go a bit rusty, which will obviously um, blunt in the point. So if you have um, some rice uh, in these boxes, then that will absorb any damp any um, in the in the actual box itself. Yeah, just going through a few things. Pencil, always worth <laughs> having a pencil if you're a match angler, because how many times people say to you, hey, um, have you got a pen? Well, problem is, if it gets damp, a pen don't work. But with a pencil, it will work. So always have a pencil, Andy. Um, it's a nice little uh, um, bait and needle. Sandy, if you're baiting there, especially these long type, you can put little cubes of meat uh, down the, uh, the shank of it, and then... Uh, simply push it, uh, your hook, um, attach your hook to the bottom, push your meat onto it, and that will uh, bait the meat onto a hook. So, you know, but as well as corn and, you know, worm, even worm, you know, if you're hair rigging, doing a lot of hair rigging. I think I've showed you them, I'm those big meat, meat punches. So that's a similar, yeah, so basically you punch your meat, you can you can basically put your meat in, put your hook on, push it on, and away you go. <laughs> Um, always worth having a lot of little different attachments, uh, swivels for example, um, quick release swivels, these are handy as well, these, um, these are uh, for, for um, pellet wagglers basically mainly, what they are, it's like a little spigot uh, that attaches itself into two bits of tube that's on the line and, uh, and therefore your float hangs from the, the swivel, see? Handy little things for pellet whack fishing, you know, do that quite a bit. Uh, just yeah, some of the bits and pieces there, which are, uh, as I say, you, you know, uh, used for the attachments. Um, so I, 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 I buy a lot of these little things and probably never had the use at most, at most of them, but uh, as I say, um, there's loads of swivels there, loads of swivels. So, as I say, that's uh, that's uh, always always definitely worth having, you know, um, swivels in your box. A couple of things quickly go through. Um, these rubber, little rubber knots, um, stop knots. Yeah, again, you can use them um, for ledgering and uh, float fishing. So, um, if you're slider fishing, 
simply there's a little loop as you can see on that wire you put your line through the loop and then you push the knot up onto the line and uh, you push the line through and you've got your rubber knot uh, rubber, rubber stopper I should say on the line so there you are that's that um, uh, I think I've showed you my little pinches and I've you know uh, because the other the other type uh, as I mentioned on my last vlog uh, for these what are called style pinches and they're very handy you know for styles and shots again you know spring so one-handed very handy um, yeah just going through super glue always have a little tube of super glue because uh, um, you know it's got multitudes of uh, purposes so it was a little blade a little uh, Stanley knife um, you know as I said always handy but you know as well as a knife uh, you know as a little Stanley blade Disgorgers, I think I've shown you all the Disgorgers I made last week. And I've shown you the little needles as well I use here for, you know, to make it holes in the hemp and, and all that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. so I got my work cut out here trying to sort it all up for the, during the lockdown. As I say, you're probably the same back home, you know, there's loads of things uh, to do. Yeah, um... You know, I suppose really, I, I should have made two vlogs here, you know, one for like float fishing and one for pole fishing and even for ledgering and feedering. But uh, as I say, you know, um, uh, when I go when I go fishing, I, I usually have everything with me anyway. Uh, I know some guys have different boxes and different tackle setups for the different types of uh, venues and, and um, you know, uh, that are going to fish. Uh, but me, I put it all together. Uh, here's a little handy thing, I don't know if you've seen these little maggot, uh, well you can use this as a maggot cup on your pole, yeah, um, put your maggots in, you turn, turn upside down the maggots drop out, or you can use it, as it, it comes off and you can use it as a cup. Oh, I won't bother, but <laughs> we use that little cup as well, so that's another another little handy thing. Now, when it comes to shots these days, um, as I say, there's the uh, there's the normal shots, which you can, uh, you know, you should get them in little tubs, or, in in my case, um, uh, have them in, in a multi-tub, a multi -tub. I'll show you now. Yeah, so the, uh, as I said, with the multi tub that I have, um, I always find these very handy because they're all in one go instead of having separate little tubs. Um, you know, so I've got the mat, uh, Swan Shot, AAA, BB, uh, ones, four, six, eight, tens. Uh, now, very popular over the last few years are uh, what we call the Stots. Now, Stots are almost like a, a mini. Um, uh, I suppose, that, well, they are, well, uh, they're, they're like a, a style shop, I've got the old style shots, and, uh, but these are micro, and you can get them down to size 12, 11, um, 8, 9, and 10, so they're, they're, you know, and they're refillable, so they're always handy tools there, or handy, <laughs> for weighing the, the floats down. Uh, a couple of other little things here I've got, um, they do, yeah. I've always got a few, uh, a few olivets. That's for the pole fishing. Um, nice little handy little tool if you're feeding fishing. If you only want to put a little bit of bait in, you know, you know, for when you're ledgering, so you can change it from, a, say, a little lead. Um, these are becoming quite popular. These little straight bombs now because. Uh, you can you can put a, um, a boat rig on these and they catch a lot of carp with them and uh, to say it's uh, that's a method again that you know maybe I'll talk about in a, on a later vlog yeah actually talking about uh, talking about ledges and that uh, these are always handy to have. Um, we used to use these quite a lot uh, on, on the river Y uh, don't know if you've seen them before but basically um, you can clip them onto your feeder all right, so like what we call ski leads, and you just bend them around and bend them on your feeders, give extra weight to your feeders. So yeah, so I got a load of them, different sizes. Again, you know, you can add them to the um, to your feeder. You know, obviously you want to get the right balance sometimes when you feed the fishing. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't want it too heavy, but you don't want it too light. You want to just hold holding bottom while you put the the bow in the line. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I talk about um, that sort of fishing, bow in the line. I, I remember when uh, when it first came out. Um, I actually when <laughs> for my sins, I actually went boat fishing. Um, well, must be thirty odd years ago when I was out on the river. Um, uh, well, the Severn is the channel, you know, running into the uh, the English Channel, and. Um, and basically, uh, the lads were all fishing what we call uptight casting. And what they were doing, they were th casting their, their weights up. Now, obviously, quite heavy pound weights. And what would happen, that would fall down, uh, you know, in the deep water. And um, it, now, if they didn't put a bow in the line, it would just drag off its, you know, because the current just put it off. So they learned how to put a bow in the line and then wait for a, a drop back. And um, <laughs> I actually wrote an article about this, um, uh, you know, how you can actually fish it on the river. And uh, lo and behold, um, I mean, everyone does that now these days, you know, but I, I like to think that I was perhaps one of the first to uh, introduce it into, uh, um, you know, freshwater uh, fishing. And uh, so we still use it quite successfully on the river. Why, you know, just make sure that you've got a bow in the line because Otherwise, if you've got a straight um, uh, uh, line to your to your feeder um, or your bomber, what will happen? It'll uh, it'll the pressure of water on the line will just you know um, basically take it off out out of your position where you've cast it. So if you if you cast and you let it sink and then just let the line out and create that bow um, and then you know you just wait for the because the fish hook themselves basically and you know, it's what happens. Your, your rod's bent on so it whoop, and it bounces back. And it's on, you know, simple method really. <laughs> but there you are. As I say, that's uh, that's something else. Yeah, um there there's a few other things that uh I I've got in my um luggage uh, bag which I haven't brought up with me, but uh, very important these days to have what we call um a, a rope. Yeah, okay guys, um I just had a call come through then from uh from my lady from Thailand, so I just had to break off and just talk to her then for a minute. But uh, anyway, coming back to, um, I think I was saying about um, my luggage. Uh, in my luggage, I got other uh, items that we carry. Um, obviously, a spade for digging out sometimes when we need to. Um, I've got a rope as well that um, uh, that's attached to uh, like a, a spiral, which um, it fits into the ground, and and I can travel uh, travels down the um, a deep uh, bank. On a peg, you know, especially if you're fishing a river somewhere, and it's like a bit of a safety line as well. Uh, but it's handy for like climbing up and up and down the bank. So um, if I ever I got time, um, I think I've showed it on my vlogs before. But uh, if I got time, uh, um, perhaps in another vlog, I'll actually show you uh, what it looks like. But um, you can you can get them from uh, most um, pet stores. I think they they long leads. They are you know um, strong cord uh, for tethering up a, a dog. I think. And you just, you know, um, turn the spindle into the ground and it stays there. And it's quite strong. Anyway, coming back to uh, the bits and pieces in the tackle box. Uh, one thing that I found necessarily these days, and that's uh, one of these, little magnifying glass. And this is, as I mentioned before, you know, if ever you um, you, you, you snag uh, or you bump um, a couple of fish, you think, oh, that point of the hook's not not sharp. Then you've got this to, to basically, you know, to ch double check it out uh, which reminds me um glasses sunglasses don't get your sunglasses um i got mine with me here uh, there in the, in the in the van so but uh, normally they're in my box so that's something else to remember okay um right uh, just, um, oh here's an, another sh a hook sharpener this is a flatter one um that i mentioned just a bit earlier tonight um, forceps. Now, the forceps are very handy. Um, even though disgorgers, good, a good disgorger these days, you know, will actually take most of the um, hooks out of the, the mouth, which I, I explained in my last vlog. But this particular one, uh, obviously, is worth handing hand him because sometimes if you need to, you know, really grab hold of the hook and, and pull it out, you know, and, uh, you know, especially if you hook yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just way to, or, or saying that um, I remember uh, on one uh, international match I actually hooked my finger and uh, oh it was terrible and I, I was trying to pull it out it was it was hurting me so much so what I'd done little tip I cut the line and I got all of my 
uh, things and I push pull the hook through the skin rather than try and take it up with a barb on you know so uh, that's why you know these days barbless hooks are much better these days I try to use barbless hooks wherever I can um, yeah oh talk about the scourges as well uh, I've got another one here this has got actually got a cork on it and the reason uh, being is that um, a lot of the scourges uh, you know the plastic ones even will sink well you know if you put a little cork body on which I've done on here um, you know if you Match a fall in the water, at least it's you know, you won't sink. Um, another good idea is uh, if you get any spare pole elastic, is to put a pole elastic through the top and, and hang it around your neck, you know, so you got it there all the time. I should do that all the time once. Um, I don't know why I don't bother these days, I don't know. Yeah, <clears throat> um, oh, there's another needle, another hook in the needle there. That's uh, another. Scissors, I, I, I know I mentioned scissors before, but these are always handy because, you know, as your fingers, your quite big fingers, these, uh, this pair, you can get your th finger and thumb in quite easy. Like with a lot of the others, like, for example, the small, smaller ones, you can't, you know, you, you're like struggling sometimes, you know, so, yeah. So, another little idea from me. So, I've got plenty of at those aluminium disgorges, which I carry around with me. Another meat uh, punch. Use of bread as well, by the way. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, talking about that. Uh, da -da. Yeah. In one of my boxes, I've got um, one of my tr trays, I should say. Um, I'll come back to that because uh, I just want to show you uh, like a, a long bread punch which is quite good but uh, I'll come back to that in a minute yeah I found it <laughs> basically it's like an aluminium um, with a wooden handle um, and again if you look it's it it can be used as a bread punch and a disgorger oh, just a little handy tool that's all I just I should pick that up somewhere a few many years ago <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and I just noticed uh, my uh, bait drop, as I show you the smaller ones, this is a medium sized one, this is a plastic one, um, again same principle, uh, uh, but then I mentioned about the chop worm one, there's a kitty, look at that one there, <laughs> this is perfect for, as I said, for getting a load of bait into the swim, um, again same principle, you know, <laughs> you uh, Put your line through um, through the loop onto the little bit of uh, cork. Obviously, you fill it up, and then when it's the bottom, whoop, it releases loads and loads of bait. Um, which is, as I said, you know, um, great when uh, when you want to get feed in the swim, and, you know, especially on the bottom. I think I showed you this last time. Little uh, hook tires, uh, not hook tires, loop tires. Even though, uh, as I said, I, I do them by hand. Um, I still carry the, the odd one. Right, a couple other things here which um, are in my box as well. Uh, a line sinker. Now this is basically, um, this is a, as a commercial one but I can tell you that it's just as easy to, to buy um, some washing up liquid, very washing up liquid is a good one. Um, sprayed onto the line if you want it to sink and then if you want it to float as I said use the muslin which I showed you earlier or you can get a silicone based um, spray as well, so you got you know you got two of them. As I say, that's that's for your line. And talking about line, well, uh, hook length lines. I got a bit of an assortment. Um, I've got uh, to do well. In fact, I probably carry too many because I probably only use uh, a couple at any one time. Uh, the most um, the most ones I use uh, are probably the. Um, uh, the I think the Preston power ones I think I use a lot of. Um although I'm into um the the um I'm into the uh Flory as well, that's a good one, you know. There's another one there. As I say, they're all uh it's your own preference really, but I always make sure that you know I got uh, I go right down to diameter six if I need to. Don't use them so much these days. Many years ago when I used to make the canals. Um, you know, we used to um, have to go right down to, uh, um, you know, diameter six bottoms. Um, and um, I don't know if, if I've mentioned this before, but um, 
you know, when we used to struggle on the winter leagues, we had to, you know, just get a fish in the net. And uh, I remember we won uh, Welsh National once, our Cardiff Nomad team. And um, one of the tactics uh, was, was quite interesting because um, uh, we used the insides of a caster. Now, if you can imagine, a caster is like goo. So what we used to do is take the top off the uh, caster, get a small hook, obviously 22 or, you know, even smaller if you can. And if you dip it into the caster, into the shell, and you draw it out, the uh, the yolk clings to the hook. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to catch a little roach or a little minnow or anything like that, you see in the water, then that is the ideal substance. Because dangle that in front of his mouth and it'll, you know, it smells obviously the amino acids, but it sucks it right in and you've got a chance of hooking it. But that's, uh, as I say... Don't, thank God, I don't fish with many of those matches anymore, but we we did many years ago, so uh, that's uh, that's it. But anyway, coming back to the um, the line, I say diameter eight, uh, popular diameter nine, probably ten is the most popular, ten and even eleven. I, I'm probably guilty that I don't go heavier, you know, when I fish for bream, because I, I always I, I tend to catch most of my fish on uh, eleven, uh, diameter eleven, and um, you know I can even catch like four pound fish um, I, as I mentioned as well I, I, I call barbel on uh, down to ten bottoms you know so it's it's how you you know it's how you manage uh, you know um, you know to play the fish basically yeah so there they are there's my uh, um, yeah, super shinobi that's, a, that's a, another one I used to use um, as I say I um, I have mentioned in my autobiography but many years ago all these high tech you know, thin diameter lines um, weren't around. There was only just a couple of brands on the market many years ago, Bayer and Maxima and, you know, maybe a DAM, I think, and one or two others. And uh, when I got sponsored by Water Queen, I come in, uh, you know, they asked me to promote all this new, uh, well, in them days it was new, not so new now, but um, all these high-tech lines and um, smaller diameter lines. So I just go around the shops trying to promote it and just... You know, shopkeepers just didn't want to know. They were more interested in in making money on and you know on, on their uh, on their normal brands, and um, they didn't give a shelf space. But uh, they obviously missed out, uh, missed a trick there, because obviously this day and age, if you haven't got high tech lines, you, you won't catch fish half the time. You know. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, as I say, you know, they, I'm always uh, accumulating bits and pieces because uh, you know. Some of these tools you probably never use. Some of them um, you, you use on an often, uh, you know, regular basis. Uh, this tool, for example, is uh, spring-loaded uh, uh, for picking up items out of the tackle box. Quite handy, you know. I don't know what I'm saying. Guru, but it looks like a Guru one by the, <laughs> the colour of it. <laughs> okay, um, another little knob picker. <laughs> Just found that in my box as well. Uh, I say I got so many bits and pieces that, um, but I think that um, most of the things I've shown you so far, uh, I have used and I use them on a regular basis. Um, there's probably a few other other little things I I got which uh, I, as I said, as I'm going through my box, I probably haven't come across uh, to be able to show you. Uh, just looking now, yeah, uh, bands of course, you know, um, for pellet fishing, you know that sort of thing. Um, you know, Little boxes, obviously, to keep them in. Uh, more, more hooks here. I uh, keep my uh, magnetic hook boxes here. I say the marvelous thing, uh, you know, because uh, years ago we said they, they'd be loose in your box, you know, but at least for these magnetic ones, they, they do tend to, uh, you know, group them and keep them together. Okay, well, um, I think I'll leave that at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll probably another make another uh, couple of vlogs uh, coming up soon. Obviously, not much else to do in this lockdown. So, uh, but I can give you a little bit of uh, you know benefits of my experience and uh, and also a little bit more on methods and techniques how I use a couple of the items. As I said, I will be making a couple on the on floats. Um, you know, float fishing. Um, you know, in the meantime, pop over the website. Uh, I might even make another couple on uh, ground baits because um, uh, I've been developing a couple more lately. So uh, until I get out on the river bank, I, I really won't be able to, um, you know, give it my full uh, um, 100% guarantee it's going to catch fish yet. <laughs> but, you know, as I say, um, 
but that's something for the future. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed this vlog, and um, if you do, then please thumbs up and uh, you know come back, subscribe, come back the next one, and uh, leave a comment. You know that'd be be nice. And uh, as I say, keep yourself safe. You know, stick to the guidelines of the uh, government because you know they they do know what they're doing. I mean, um, you know. Terrible thing now, it's uh, coming up to 6,000 deaths in the UK, terrible thing, you know, you know and I, I, you know, I'm definitely staying um, indoors because, uh, you know, I've got an underlying problem with a bit of asthma, so, you know, if I catch it, <laughs> God, God knows. Uh, anyway, so, stay safe, um, hopefully we'll see you again soon, uh, if not on a video, on a vlog, out on the riverbank or somewhere. Of, as, as the Queen says, we'll meet again. <laughs>